In this chapter, we will be learning how societies lived in forests and how they were affected by colonialism. Before we go into the details, we need to learn a few terms associated with this lesson. Deforestation. Deforestation is cutting down of trees indiscriminately in a forest area. Under colonial rule, it became very systematic and extensive. We shall now see why this took place. Why deforestation? As population increased over the centuries and the demand for food went up, peasants extended the boundaries of cultivation by clearing forests. The British encouraged the production of commercial crops such as jute, sugar, wheat and cotton for their industries as raw material. The British thought that forests were unproductive land as they yielded no revenue or agriculture produce. Cultivation was viewed as a sign of progress. Oak forests in England were disappearing. There was no timber supply for the shipbuilding industry. Forest resources of India were used to make ships for the Royal Navy. The spread of railways required two things. One, land to be cleared to lay railway tracks. And two, wood as a fuel for locomotives and for railway line sleepers. Large areas of natural forests were cleared for tea, coffee and rubber plantations. Thus, land was given to the planters at cheap rates. In the process, commercial forestry was encouraged. We shall now see how this was done. Commercial forestry. The British were worried that the use of forests by local people and the reckless felling of trees by traders would destroy forests and hence invited German expert Dietrich Brandis as first Inspector General of Forests in India. Brandis set up the Indian Forest Service in 1864 and helped formulate the Indian Forest Act of 1865. The Imperial Forest Research Institute was set up in Dehradun in 1906. Scientific forestry was taught there. In the scientific forestry system, forests with different kinds of trees were replaced by plantations. Villagers were dissatisfied with the forest acts. They were now forced to steal wood from the forest. If they were caught, they were punished. We shall now look into some of the rules and how cultivation was done using them. Forest rules and cultivation. Shifting cultivation or Sweden agriculture was the agricultural practice in many parts of Asia, Africa and South America. The colonial foresters did not favor the system as it made it difficult for the government to calculate taxes. In addition, the forest officials saw in it the danger of fire and also that no trees could grow on this kind of land. Hunting and forest law. The forest law forbade the villagers from hunting in the forest but encouraged hunting as a big sport. They felt that the wild animals were savage, wild and primitive just like the Indian society and that it was their duty to civilize them. New trade and new employment. New opportunities opened in trade as the forest department took control of the forests. Many large European trading firms were given the sole right to trade in forest products of a particular area. Many pastoral communities lost their means of livelihood. All this resulted in rebellions. Forest rebellions, world wars and deforestation. Forest communities rebelled against the changes imposed upon them. The people of Bastar were one such group. The initiative was taken by the Dhurvas of the Kangar forest where reservation first took place. The British sent troops to suppress the rebellion. It took them three months to regain control. The world wars had a major impact on forests. The forest department cut freely to meet the British demands. The Dutch followed the scorched earth policy of destroying sawmills, burning logs of teak so that the Japanese could not benefit from them. 